Hey friends, it's Peggy Hall back with you to add positive value to your life. I titled this video, Stop Exercising for Your Health, uh, kind of as to catch your eye, because it is one of the three ways that I want to share with you today about how to accelerate your physical healing. Last week, we talked about getting through your emotional upheavals, and I gave three specific tips for that. And I have three specific tips for you, and I'll get to the one about stop exercising for your health in just one moment. I know it sounds like it's upside down, but it really is true. And I'll explain that in just one moment. But first I wanted to share with you the number one way that I believe you can improve your physical health. I touched on it last week and that has to do with getting a good night's sleep. There are so many studies and so much evidence and you in your own life probably know that when you don't get a good night's sleep, either because you went to bed too late or you couldn't fall asleep, or you fell asleep, but then you woke up and you couldn't get back to sleep, or you just tossed and turned, or you woke up too early, or you were interrupted by animals or children or the weather or what have you, this can wreak havoc in your daily life. I have found, and I'm sure you have as well, because over the early days of the hogwash, I rarely got a good night's sleep. In fact, I'm still kind of trying to get my sleep dialed in again. But in that first year, I went to bed like three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. I would be back up again at 7 a.m. trying to keep on top of the thousands and thousands of emails that I was getting for people asking me how they could survive these last few years in the beginning when every when the carpet was pulled out from under us and the hogwash sloshing started, people needed help on how to navigate everything. And I could not rest until I helped as many as I could. And I had other helpers that were helping me help others, but we literally we're getting thousands of inquiries a day, which is why I started doing all of the Peggy to the Rescue videos on my Healthy American channel so that I could answer like one me to many all at, you know, all at once instead of replying to everybody one at a time. So I came out with programs and classes and documents and so forth. But during that period of time, literally for the last couple of years, I have had such poor sleep. And what happened is that I was irritable. I couldn't think clearly. I was angry. I was hungry. Mainly, I was so irritable. And I probably emailed people really snippy responses. I was probably cranky and snarky on my videos. And I couldn't really keep my emotional balance going because of that lack of sleep. My eating went haywire as well because the hormones that have to do with hunger and feeling satisfied are all mixed up with the hormones of sleep as well. And with exercise, first of all, I didn't carve out any time for exercise and I was so fatigued from not enough sleep that the last thing I wanted to do was exercise, even though it's normally the first thing that I want to do and that I do do every day these days because I absolutely love it, but not for my health. And I'll tell you about that in just a, a moment. So getting a good night's sleep in my book is the key. It is the most important factor, I think, in our life. I, I believe that everything is built on a good night's sleep. If there's one thing that you could change in order to get your life back on track, having more energy, having more emotional balance, having better ideas, having the desire to go out and live life, not being depressed or angry or moody or easily irritated or fill in the blank, all of that is based on a good night's sleep. I don't want to repeat all of my tips on how to get a good night's sleep because I did a series of videos already on this channel, so you can watch those, but I just wanted to remind you of how very important a good night's sleep is when it comes to your health. All right, let's go to the number two where I'm saying don't exercise for your health. What I mean by this is I want you to exercise for your enjoyment. This can change everything for you. Over the last, oh my gosh, a dozen years or more, I have been helping people live a healthier, more vibrant lifestyle in a natural way. Many people want to get off medication. They want to feel better. They want to heal emotional wounds. They want to lose weight. They want to stop procrastinating. They just want to thrive in their life. And that has been my calling and my passion for, oh my gosh, since, yeah, I would say over 20 years. So 
when it comes to exercise, many people exercise because they want to lose weight. They want to reduce their blood pressure. They want to, uh, you know, fill in the blank. Usually it has to do with losing weight. What happens is that I found that people often will undertake a type of exercise that they believe is going to accelerate their weight loss, but they really don't enjoy the exercise. They might, back in the old days when you could go to the gym, go on the treadmill, lift weights, take a class. Maybe they were embarrassed to be in the class because everybody else was better or they were exercising in front of these big mirrors and everybody could see them. So they would dread going there to those classes or to the gym or going on the treadmill or ride the bicycle in the gym. I know this because people told me this. And it was such an eye-opening experience for me because I have always exercised because I love it. I do it for enjoyment. My favorite place to be is in the water, whether that's a bathtub, a swimming pool, or the ocean, or in the rain. I need to be in the water. I thrive being in the water, which is why in the early days of the hogwash, that was another part of my uh, demise, really, physically, mentally, emotionally, because the swimming pools were closed. I couldn't do my preferred form of exercise. And I actually taught water exercise classes, which I loved. It combined my love for exercise, my love for the water, my love for teaching. So I have always exercised because I absolutely love it. Let me know in a comment what kind of exercise you love and what kind of exercise you dread. There has been throughout my life, uh, there have been periods of time. Uh, when I have undertaken certain kinds of exercise programs that I didn't really want to do that I would see in a magazine. I used to write for all those magazines, the health magazines. Oh my gosh, I've got hundreds of published articles for you know, different women's health magazines and sharing exercise and eat, eating plans and all of that. And then I realized I don't like being on the treadmill. I don't like doing this type of exercise. I like walking. I like swimming. I like surfing. I like doing my water exercise. I like stretching. These are the kinds of things that actually make me feel better. So when I say don't exercise for your health, what I mean is don't exercise just to burn calories or to reduce your blood pressure or because your doctor told you to or you read it in a magazine that you're supposed to move your body for 30 minutes. Find something that you love to do. It could be bowling. It could be gardening, taking your dog for a walk, doing stand-up paddle, playing tennis. I hear that pickleball is all of the rage. You could ride a bike. You could play basketball. You could do some exercise videos at home. You could get in the water. You could do some water exercise. You could paddle a kayak. Do something that you love. Maybe take a dance class or line dancing, something like that. Hip hop class, what have you. Just put on some music and move your body. It's so funny because my husband and I, whenever we go to a wedding, we love to dance at weddings. We've never taken a dance class, but we just love to get out there. We do our funny little moves. He's got one called the sleepwalker and I do the swimming and we just have so much fun dancing and we work up a sweat. We're actually laughing and having fun and we probably are burning some calories in the meantime, but we're doing it because we enjoy it. And I realized, wow, we really probably should like go, maybe not go dancing, but maybe take some dance lessons or do some dance classes, you know, with a video or what have you, because it's so much fun. Fun and fun is the operative word. So instead of exercising for your health, exercise for fun. It, you'll be able to do it for a longer period of time. And when you are enjoying yourself, you're experiencing that flood of feel good hormones and chemicals that actually will help you be healthier and happier. If you are on a treadmill, if you are getting up at five, six o'clock in the morning and you're dreading it to go for a workout or to take a class, I'm telling you, friends. Those negative uh, feelings that you have and that you know, frustration and resentment of having to go exercise, that is worse for you than not exercising at all. So do me a favor, and I want you to agree that you are going to exercise for fun. All right, the next thing that I could also say is don't eat to lose weight. Or maybe I should say don't eat for your health. I could put that in the same category. Are you ready? I want you to eat what you enjoy. And you need to enjoy what you eat. I think I need to do an entire video on this next week because I can do such a deep dive. I'll, 
I'll do a little glossary for you today. We'll kind of gloss over it and then we'll do a deep dive next week. There's so much goodness in this outlook of eat what you enjoy and enjoy what you eat. I remember back in the day when I was on a diet, I've been on so many diets. I've created my own. I've followed all different ones. I used to write about diets for the magazines. And now I no longer do any dieting. I have quit fighting with food. I have made peace with food, with my body. And what I focus on is enjoying every bite. And here's the kicker. If I don't enjoy it, I'm not going to eat it. And if I actually, that's the most important thing, because sometimes you might take a portion of what you might think is a forbidden food. And I don't believe in any forbidden foods. I believe in foods that you enjoy and foods that you don't enjoy. There are foods that have a higher nutritional value than others, but I don't believe any longer in putting foods on the no fly list, on the no eat list, because often that backfires and it will cause many of us to crave them and want them even more because we believe we can't have them or that they're bad for us. So when you enjoy what you eat, that means savoring every bite, every morsel. You're not eating guilt along with the food. You're enjoying whatever it is. And we'll talk about this next week, how I do my kind of, it's like a, almost like a ritual with eating and how that has helped me immensely in my relationship with food. Because often we, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but many of my clients in years past have told me that it's the same thing. We eat out of boredom, out of frustration, out of anger, out of guilt, out of sorrow, out of loneliness, out of so uh, sadness. And we might also eat as a way to like, get back, I'm gonna show them. And we eat, you know, out of, it's kind of strange, but we eat, out of a way to deal with our emotions, whether it's frustration, anger, sadness, loneliness, fill in the blank. It's an easy way for many of us to try to escape the pain. The problem is that it doesn't work in the long term. It might dampen and deaden our emotions momentarily, but then we have more guilt later. So I don't want to eat and ingest the guilt as well. So if I'm eating something. I want to focus on it. I want to enjoy it. And normally when I, and I say, what I say normally is it doesn't work hundred percent of the time for me. I am also a work in progress, but I am moving in the right direction and it feels wonderful. And I want you to feel wonderful as well. Maybe you don't have this issue with food and this is not, you're like, Peggy, I don't even know what you're talking about. I eat when I'm hungry. I stop when I'm full. Like, wow. I am so great, grateful to hear that because very few of us are that way. But there are those that have no emotional entanglement with food. But you may have something with something else, with shopping or being online, being on social media, fill in the blank. But when you are doing these things mindfully and you're doing it with enjoyment, for me, I found that it's easier for me to say, wow, that was good. I've had enough and I can have more later if I want it, rather than that's the last time I'm ever, 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 ever going to eat this food ever again in my life. And then like tomorrow I have it. So that is something that I've broken that type of structure in my life. And I want you to break free from it as well. So rather than just eating for health, you want to eat for enjoyment. And you might be thinking, well, that means I'm going to eat French fries and chocolate cake and ice cream and pizza. Well, hang on, we'll dive into this next week and go a little deeper. But the point I wanted to make was one of these days, one of these times in the past when I was on a diet and I was eating tuna fish and cottage cheese because I had read somewhere that you should eat that if you want to lose weight. And I remember eating it going, I don't even like this. I don't even like what I'm eating. And I sort of forced myself to do it. I wanted to see if this diet would work, but it was the forcing and the resentment that made me crave other foods. And all of the negativity that I had around the food certainly wasn't helping me either. So there are no magic foods, friends. There are foods that are going to nourish you that will give you energy. There are certain foods that will zap your energy. And when you become aware of that, it is so much easier to say, you know, I would like to feel light and energized today. And maybe there's a day where you want to feel sort of uh, like, okay, that 
meal or that food really brought my energy down. I'm going to go take a nap and that's okay as long as you're doing it mindfully. Oh, I'm so excited to talk about this in more detail next week. So physical healing for me looks like getting adequate sleep, quality sleep, please. Uh, I'll link for you below my videos about sleep and then exercising for enjoyment not tying it to, oh, I have to go to the gym for 30 minutes. No, just get out, move your body and feel how good it, it, it feels to move your body and encourage yourself as you're doing it. Like, hey, I'm having fun. This feels so good. I love the deep breathing. My body is moving. Thank you, body. Thank you, breath. Thank you, life. Thank you, Lord. These are the things that go through my mind when I'm exercising. And then eating for enjoyment. Stay tuned for more of that next week. I'm so excited to have you on board. Share this video with friends of yours that need this kind of support. Thank you for liking the video, for also subscribing to this channel. I'd like to have this channel on YouTube. I've got The Healthy American and I've got Living Swell with Peggy Hall. And that way we can talk about different topics. And if one channel gets a strike, I can still come to you uh, and bring my videos on the other channel. So thanks everybody for being on board. I look forward to seeing you next week and also at Peggy Hall or the Healthy American with Peggy Hall for my daily live streams. See you soon, everybody.